Welcome back for our next segment here on this week's episode of Inside the Glass. Before we get to our guests, I want to take a time out and thank our sponsors for this segment, the Air Force Reserve. I started my adventure in the Air Force Reserve as a payload system operator. A flight medic in the Air Force Reserve. I'm a pilot for the Air Force Thunderbirds demonstration team. We do a lot in a little bit of time, and we have to do it very efficiently. It's a very exciting career. The Reserve gave me the opportunity to learn something totally different from what I did. The training in the Air Force Reserve is second to none. The most exciting thing in the Air Force Reserve is to be able to travel. It gave me the opportunity to go to college. That was definitely a bonus. And the Air Force Reserve gave me all those opportunities, and then even more. Start your adventure in the Air Force Reserve. And welcome back. I am joined on the phone by the voice of the Lincoln Stars, Matt McGreevy. Matt, welcome to the program. Hey, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Well, Matt, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to be a broadcaster for the Lincoln Stars. Yeah, so uh, I'm from Columbus, Ohio, originally, so not too far away. Went to Ohio State, and uh, I was wrapping up my senior year at Ohio State and just kind of shooting out resumes and demos and trying to see if I could find a spot and got lucky enough that uh, Lincoln was was open. And so I joined the Stars two years ago. It was my second year with the Stars, just doing everything, broadcasting and, and digital and social media communication. So it's a whirlwind and it's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun too. Well, speaking of those Lincoln Stars, they are currently in the five spot in the Western Conference, trailing Des Moines by three points for the final playoff spot. Uh, what has your season been like to this point? And, how have the last few weeks been pushing for the playoffs? Um, it's been good. It's been up and down. I think every season kind of has ups and, flow, ups and flows like that um, with injuries and whatnot. But uh, nine-game homestand, that's what the team's coming off of going into the Youngstown trip. So it, it's kind of weird how it works out where you're sitting around at home for a month or a month and a half, and then all of a sudden it's a 15-hour bus ride to Youngstown. But, um, you know, I, I think two weeks ago the team was in a much different spot than they were right now. To be three points out is almost shocking, but they've really been able to turn it on, and uh, and things are just going well. They only made one real big deadline acquisition, that's Ian pulling in Jack Doremus from Sioux Falls, and it's just it's made them deeper down the center. They weren't too good in the face-off circle before they brought him in, and just the, uh, even that has been uh, it's had such a huge impact on the success of the power play and penalty kill, and as it's gone lately, the team goes where the power play goes. If I recall, uh, Jack Doremus from when Sioux Falls was in uh, Youngstown earlier this season, he cleaned up on the Phantoms in the faceoff circle. So I will second your uh, your analysis there. Uh, who are the Stars' uh, other top offensive players? Uh, offensively, Brandon Schultz has been really good. He was digged up a little bit in Waterloo last year. So the, the Stars got him, I guess you'd say, off the clearance rack almost. So they, they traded a Ethan Johnson, who had yet to play in the USHL for him, and that deal's been really good. I mean, Brandon's a, a smaller forward. He's really, really quick, though. Um, so if you put pucks in good areas, he's usually going to get to him, and if he doesn't bury it, he's going to at least be able to create some offense. Ethan Frank, a similar player, um, you know, just really fast. I mean, that seems to be a mantra for the Stars. So um, those two guys, and then one of the guys who doesn't really fit the mold of those two is Sam Sternshine who's another one the Stars picked up in a trade from Cedar Rapids uh, way earlier in the season. And he's come in, he's just crushed it. Uh, he's a big body. When you put him in front of the net, he usually finds a way to get a stick on the puck, and he leads the Stars in goal scoring. Just so I don't screw up his name, uh, your goaltender won the USHL CCM Goaltender of the Week Award for his performance this past weekend. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about him and maybe clue me in on how to pronounce that last name? Yeah, so it's actually really easy. Uh, Joseph Coronar, uh, he's a Czech goalie, first year in the league, uh, draft eligible goalie for the second year. So um, he came in, and it was kind of the, the conversation with the Stars were going to have really good goaltending with him and Kate and Primo, and they had. Um, those two are kind of flip-flopping starts for the most part. Now, finally, it looks like Joseph Coronar's got the edge. He's had the last four consecutive starts. And he was outstanding last weekend, obviously being goalie of the week, getting a 3-2 win against Tri-City and then a shutout against Madison. So uh, he's just been reliable. Um, he's not, you know, off the ice. He's really quiet. I think his English is better than he thinks it is. But um, it's odd. He, he just really doesn't talk much. I think with a lot of European players, you're like, well, they don't talk much because they don't know the language. But then there's some guys where you're just like, that's just kind of the guy he is. He's just quiet. He goes about his business. And it is what it is. So, uh yeah, that's, Joseph Cornar has been good, though. 
You mentioned uh, the play from last weekend, and I also, I guess I'll point out that Cornar uh, third in the USHL in goals against average, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah, he's been uh, up there all year. And so you mentioned those two games last weekend. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about the uh, the two games that Lincoln won last weekend? Yeah, both kind of gutted out wins against teams that were out of the playoff picture uh, on on Friday night against Tri-City. They ended up trailing early in the third period and were able to kind of claw back with a couple power play goals. And the uh, you know, power play was big. They scored twice for them um, on Friday night. And, you know, the previous Friday, Team USA was the 17th. Power play went three for six, and they won that game 7-3. So it's, uh, the power play is extremely important for the Stars right now if they could get it going, and they did against Tri-City. And then against Madison, it was just really – it was just uh, one goal was all they needed. And, um, you know, Joseph Coronar was really good to, to Madison's credit. Dryden McKay was as well in net for the Caps. Um, just uh, a couple of similar wins, you know, all he needed was one. So that's all you, you know, one goal, two points on that night. Uh, what do you think we're, we'll see out of, at the Cavelli Center out of these stars and fans this weekend with both teams really desperate for points? Yeah, I'm really excited for it. Um, I think it's, it's just awesome how it sets up with these two teams basically in the same spot, just in a different conference and, and especially being the first meeting of the season. So, um, I'm, I'm excited to see what happens. I know the Stars have struggled a little bit on Fridays. I believe going into last week, they were 2-6-2 two, and two on Friday games. Of course, they did get the win against Tri-City last Friday. But even so, to be able to play, uh, you know, you're forced to play after a 15-hour bus ride. And I think that might have factored into the fact that, uh, you know, Stars are actually leaving on Wednesday morning and, uh, and breaking up the trip to stop a Notre, Notre Dame on the way. So, um, I don't know. Hopefully the bus legs don't have too much of an effect, but it should set up for a nice one. Any family coming up from the Columbus area for you this weekend, Grace? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, my parents are coming up. I don't know if they're going to the game or not. They've came to a couple of the Stars games already, so I think they, uh, they might have their fill. We're, we're, we're big Jackets fans, so right now the, the Blue Jackets are playing well enough to probably satisfy any happy desires they have. But, yeah, I'll see a little bit of family. The king of country western in the USHL, Matt McGreevy. Matt, can we get a guitar for you before we let you off the phone? I don't know about that. I'm probably the worst here in Nebraska. It was country night, so I had to. But uh, uh, I don't know. I might have to reserve that for next year's country night. Don't want to wear it out. All right. Well, Matt, thank you so much for joining us here on Inside the Glass. We look forward to seeing you on Friday. All right. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. And fans, don't go away because coming up in our next segment, we will have this week's alumni report. Thank you so much to the Air Force Reserve for sponsoring this segment.